Hey guys, TGKS Productions. So I have a little bit of a different video for you today than what I typically do uh, for the uh, for my channel videos. Usually I'm doing like guide videos for either GTA, Red Dead Online, or even uh, showcasing new content with updates. And in this video I have a PvP video, which I don't do a lot of, at least not anymore, uh, just because in my opinion personally I believe the... Uh, you know, PvP and competitiveness has sort of gone downhill with GT Online over the years. I wouldn't necessarily say GT Online has always been the most uh, balanced in a sense, at least free mode PvP. You know, you've, you've always had vehicles like the Laser and the Rhino Tank, you know, obviously when GT Online was still new and fresh. And, you know, those vehicles pretty much dominate just about any other vehicle you throw at, at least with the Laser, and even still today with the Laser. But, you know, even regarding back sort of when GT Online was still new, so I, I don't think that GT Online always was the most competitiveness when it comes to PvP and combat, but I definitely think it has gone more downhill over the years. And, you know, so given that, you know, obviously I don't put that much emphasis on it anymore, but uh, this fight in particular was a little bit more competitive than usual. Um, you know, I would say mainly because uh, at the time I'm recording this video, it's March 2020, uh, a lot of times with an ongoing PvP fight in GT Online or combat situation, uh, when you're engaging with other players in free mode, majority of the time, like I said, with an ongoing fight, one of the parties in the fight is going to end up using an MK2 oppressor. You know, I get into PvP fights a lot, uh, you know, countless ones, you know, over the weeks and, and, and months and even sometimes daily. I don't engage in them. I don't, you know, I'm a defensive player. I'm just obviously going to defend myself. But with an ongoing fight, I can assure you the majority of the time, and you might have even experience this, an MK2 presser ends up getting used in the course of the fight. However, with this fight, an MK2 presser was not used, which is very interesting because that is very uncommon today, at least like I said at the time I'm recording this, March 2020, at this time and online, that is a very uncommon situation. So that is sort of one of the reasons why I wanted to showcase this because it's a little bit more competitive, maybe a little bit more of an entertaining video. But in any case, let's get into how this started and the outcome. So what you're seeing here actually happened a few weeks ago. I'm about to start a nightclub sale selling around $800,000 worth of goods. And unfortunately, I did lose the sale. That is sort of what started this PvP situation with this sale griefer. But if we fast forward a little bit here, you'll see on this nightclub sale, I have my you know mini-map extended or expanded. I'm basically checking on the area around me. I end up pausing my map to get a little bit of a broader view. And you see, I see this B11 Strike Force. That's sort of the plain icon that you saw on the map there and I was a little bit curious about what he was doing I ended up even pausing the map uh, up here a little bit and he ends up getting closer to me so at this point obviously I'm considering that he is probably going to be attacking me he could be going to the Fort St. Kudo hangar as well but he's likely attacking me to be honest I was not that concerned because uh, one you cannot lock onto these sail vehicles so it'd be very difficult for him to be able to hit me with the missiles um, even later, I know he, I know he shot, I believe, the barrage missiles at me. I think that shoots like, what, five, seven missiles. He only hit me with one of them. So it, it is very hard to, to hit, obviously, uh, this with the B-11 Strike Force with the free aim missiles. Then you also have the explosive MG rounds, which he's using on me, which I also wasn't concerned about. However, that was a big mistake, and I will talk about that in a second. But essentially, I'm just going across the Zancudo Bridge here. He is obviously just trying to hit me with the explosive MG rounds. Hits me a little bit. Um, but also misses a lot as well. And um, I did activate Ghost about 30 seconds ago, so I, I was trying to obviously mess him up a little bit. Honestly, at this point, it really didn't matter as much because obviously I was on a straightaway. He, you know, it's pretty predictable where I'm at. Um, but, you know, he, he does know where I'm at. He, he does actually, you know, he's still trying to basically take me out. He's swooping around the bridge. I think even right before I get in the tunnel here, he tries to even, like, I don't know, maybe knock me off the bridge. That was pretty much my greatest concern here if I got hit with a missile and got knocked off into the water. But I really wasn't concerned about anything else other than that. If we fast forward right when I get out of the tunnel, we'll see here. This is when he shoots the barrage missiles at me. I talked about how he hit me one time. So again, it's very difficult to hit these, uh, you know, obviously without being able to lock on to at least the nightclub sail vehicles. But you'll see here, I end up turning around and I'm going back towards the tunnel. Now, essentially, if you watch my art of selling uh, series. I talk about two lines. My most recent video, top uh, five items and, and tips for GT Online sales. I talked about two lines of defenses. And what I was going to actually run here was my second line of defense. And I ended up changing my mind, which I'll talk about. But I was going to go, essentially, I was going to go back towards the tunnel, uh, park my sail vehicle under the tunnel just so he obviously wouldn't be able to, wouldn't be able to have an aerial uh, advantage on me. And then I was just going to stand at the end of the tunnel and shoot him with explosive rounds to e either disable his vehicle or obviously blow him up. 
um, but I ended up deciding not to because I, I figured I had a minute left. I'm, you know, I, I was I was getting close to the you know the drop, or at least around the area where I had to make the drop. I think with this sale, I had to search the area for the sale vehicle. But the other reason why, and this is where I made my biggest mistake in ignoring my tactics, because if I, I can guarantee you, if I would have went through with my tactics, this guy would would have never destroyed me. But Regarding the explosive MG routes, when the B-11 Strike Force was released, and it was part of the drift feed vehicles uh, for after hours back in 2018, the explosive MG round, if you looked up a review for that video back when it was released, it was very weak. It would take three to four hits just to kill a player. I'm not even talking about destroying a vehicle, just to kill a player. And my mistake was, I was considering that they still, or I, I believe they still had that same, uh, I guess, that same capacity in a sense. However, Rockstar did revamp the um, the B11 Strike Force shortly after it was released as far as explosive MG round is concerned so it's a little bit more powerful whether it's the fire rate or the damage or both I can't exactly remember what it was but they did they did improve it a little bit so this does deal a little bit more damage and that was my mistake because I can assure you if I would have known that and again that's an error on my part I should have known that I, I just never did a follow up with this vehicle but I can assure you if that if I would have known that I would have definitely ran through with my defenses um, because obviously this thing's a lot more deadly not as deadly as something like the cannon rounds on the savage laser and hydra but still more deadly than what it originally was likely if it was the original explosive mgs he likely wouldn't have gotten me but he did get an advantage right here on a straightaway um, he ends up coming right up behind me practically wrecks into me i even dropped a mine i don't know if you'll be able to hear it but you'll see it ends up damaging in my wasted screen after he destroys this uh, he ends up damaging his left wing so this thing takes a lot of damage as well but he does get right up behind me drop a mine does blow me up probably takes some damage from me as well from blowing up you'll see his left wing is damaged and obviously at this point I was, I was very upset and you know to him destroying me I don't agree with sail griefers so obviously at this point I decide to go after him so at this point my next step was considering I got destroyed right next to the Polito Bay police station and Pegasus vehicles spawn there I decided to call my Hydra in just because can, because I can take off vertically like a helicopter it will spawn Hello, Pegasus um, lifestyle management. How it can will I help spawn you? where the uh, where, where the helipad is at the Pleto Bay police station so I decided to call that in and basically go after him now he does end up going back to Fort Sancuda I thought maybe his hangar was there he ends up getting a laser at least by the looks of it on the icon on the map I thought he was going to try to either stay away from me with that or or try to attack me with that vehicle uh, but what he ended up what it really he ended up doing there was basically just uh, flying back to his hangar in LSIA because that's where his hangar was located I guess I believe the, the laser has a higher top speed than the, the strike force so I'm assuming he was just trying to get down there a little bit uh, more quickly that's really my the only thing I can take away from that the reasoning for him getting that I don't know why he didn't try to go after me with that he would have had a lot of better chance um, than going after me with the B-11 strike force in this dogfight you end up seeing coming up but uh, but yeah I, I don't know that, that was a little weird there but in any case pretty much fly back down to the hangar and obviously you know engage with him in a dogfight so right before the dogfight you'll see he's outside of his hangar I don't know if he just uh, landed the laser there or jumped out was parachuting down but I was able to get one or two uh, jet kills on him before he was able to go back into his hangar and get his B-11 strike force you'll see here for anybody who doesn't know this is how you want to attack somebody with a jet you want to always attack them as vertically as possible you're gonna see here next um, this is what you do not want to do. You never want to really t attack them uh, on a diagonal plane as you're going to see here. I almost got hit with the missile there. That is why you never want to do that. Essentially, when you attack them uh, pretty much right above them or vertically, uh, that essentially they, they really can't aim that high whether you're using the sniper with explosive rounds or an RPG or homing launcher. They're not going to be able to aim up that high. So pretty much eliminates them being able to take you out. You'll see you almost hit me there again. Uh, I don't ever claim to be a very experienced jet pilot. Um, you know, I never put a lot of emphasis into the jet just because it was always seen as a griefer vehicle and still sort of is even to this day. But, um, you know, that's sort of why I never, you know, really, I, I never really claimed to be an experienced jet pilot. I never put a lot of emphasis in it for that reason. A little bit different with the MK2 Presser. I do put a little bit more emphasis into that because um, it is a lot more useful for grinding, especially if you're using the terabyte. Um, even with like sales like the MC sales or like regarding the bag sales if they ever add that in back into the game it's very useful for that um, you know and it's it's overall even with the fence with sales it's great for but even overall it's it's more conveniently able to be spawned in so more people use it and use it more freely so I obviously force myself to obviously get used to that and sort of master that for the sake of, of PvP situations in which that would become necessary 
but you know again I never put a lot of emphasis into uh, really the jet because of, of it being a griefer vehicle and it's definitely not as conveniently used as the MK2 oppressor but essentially you'll see here he goes back in his hangar he's gonna get his B11 strike force I'm, I'm essentially running the same uh, you know sort of main jet tactic here that a lot of experienced jet pilots will run you obviously want to again stay vertically right above your target and then come down and pretty much dive attack them which you're going to see me do here i'm going to end up hitting him i believe i hit one of his engines didn't fully destroy him or blow him up and i ended up coming back around i think he got a lock on missile on me i was able to evade it and essentially just came back around and ended up killing him pretty much a point blank too i don't even know how i exactly got that that was uh pretty crazy there at the end i got him practically or killed him practically a point blank but I did end up getting him there, and then pretty much from this point, I'm just messing around with the jet, just sort of I king him with it. Um, again, you know, I'm not that experienced with this, so I'm just sort of messing around with it at this point. And uh, I do end up, eventually, after a couple more kills, I do end up killing myself. And then after that, I end up taking a different approach to this PvP situation. Now at this point in the fight, what I decided to do was get the buzzard or spawn in the buzzard. Can't use this, it rarely can ever use this in combat anymore because of the MK2 presser. It does not stand a chance against that vehicle. And even here, you end up seeing, I do decide to land this on top of LSIA or one of the buildings of LSIA because of the mere fact that I saw him go back into his hangar. So I figured he was probably getting his B11 strike force again. And the buzzard will not stand a chance against the B11 strike force given that it has a missile cooldown. It really can't take any missile hits. And, um,. It also uh, it also doesn't have any countermeasures like the B11 Strike Force, so it's not going to stand a chance against that vehicle. So obviously, I decided to land. What I essentially did here was I was going to just disable him with the explosive rounds. What I should have done in the sail, and you'll see how effective it is, obviously, right here. So I end up hitting him like three to five times with the explosive rounds. Ends up immediately spinning out. You see one of his engines are, are cutting out. And what he tries to do here, this is definitely right here the sickest kill of the fight. He ends up trying to kamikaze me here. You'll see he sort of he cuts uh, his the plane a little bit too sharp, hits the wing off the building, misses me, ejects out. I tried to melee kill him right here. He ends up, I did hit him, but I didn't kill him. He ends up pulling out his pump shotgun, takes a couple shots of me, and then boom, killed him right there with the melee kill. So I think that was probably the sickest kill of the entire fight. That was pretty cool how that just that played out right there. So that was pretty cool. And then pretty much after this point, I just ended up killing him probably about another four to maybe five, six times with the buzzard. And uh, he ends up getting one final kill on me uh, with, I believe, either an RPG or a homing launcher. Uh, it ends up disabling me or taking me out in the buzzard after I said about maybe five, six kills. And then pretty much from that point, that's about the, you know, pretty much the end of the fight. He ends up leaving the session after that. So I'll just show you sort of the next couple kills with the buzzard up until he kills me. And then, you know, I'll just show you that real quick in the video. And then pretty much from that point, he just leaves the session after that. And one more thing I want to quickly add while I'm killing this guy with the buzzard. I know, depending on who watches this, someone is going to probably try to say something about the explosive, using explosive ammo with explosive rounds. You have to understand something. You know, on average, when using that, I mean, especially against something like a laser, you know, with, with cannon rounds, I knew he was, he was using a B-11 Strike Force, and I, and I didn't even end up killing him there. He was able, that actually, on average, I want to say, takes more explosive hits than something like a laser or a hydra. So he was able to obviously eject out of there and pretty much... I limited him to, to ground combat at that point, which he still had a chance to kill me there. Obviously, he failed there as well. But regarding something like a laser or a hydra, you have to understand something. You know, you're dealing, you know, if you're going to call out someone using explosive rounds for being a cheap tactic, you have to understand something. You're also using a jet that has, you know, especially with a hydra or a laser, that has cannon rounds that are capable of, of decimating like three or four city blocks. Okay, so you have to understand. The argument could easily be turned around on the other person as well using you know the jet so i wouldn't say explosive rounds are really that unfair especially if you're using that vertical um you know the vertical tactic it's going to be very hard for someone to hit somebody that way so i like i said that's that's my argument against the people that would argue against the explosive rounds but i did just want to add that or integrate that into the video real quick
So that last kill he got on me right there pretty much concludes the fight. You'll see me go back into the airport here. I was trying to see if I could pick him up with the thermal scope. He does end up leaving the session though. So that was pretty much the end of the fight. I believe the final score was 10-2. Uh, to two. Uh, Obviously me having 10, him having 2. So that was the final score. Uh, like I said, the main reason why I want to showcase this is because you see... Over the course of the entire fight, up until he leaves the session, an MK2 presser was not used. So it's definitely, I wouldn't say this is the most competitive fight that I've ever been in. I definitely would not say that, but as far as, you know, on average with fights in online or PvP fights online as of now, definitely more competitive on average. Again, MK2 presser was not used at all during this fight, so definitely, you know, regarding today in online, it is definitely a, you know, a more competitive fight overall. You know, considering that, and also, you know, we did get, we did get, uh, did prove this guy, or I wouldn't say really prove this guy wrong, but we did get revenge on this guy in a sense for for taking out the, uh, for taking out, you know, my my cargo. Uh, I'll give him one thing. At least he didn't use an MK2 presser when he took the cargo out. But in any case, he did grief my cargo, so obviously I don't agree with that. So did have to take him out for that. But um, in any case, guys, I hope you found this video entertaining. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video and comment if you have any questions. And as always, have a great day.